Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at the new modern infotainment screens that are produced on the vehicles nowadays. I'm going to be looking at whether they're good or bad, whether they're too complicated to use, and whether they've needlessly replaced too many buttons. The latest in-car touchscreens benefit from modern computing power, and that means screen lag is almost a thing of the past. Some manufacturer systems still do require improvement to catch up to the best, but for me this is the most important point. It's only Tesla, which is a tech company that produces cars, but the rest of the screens are made by car companies that try and produce tech. I've had a fair bit of experience with different systems over the last few years. My old BMW had three different ways that you could make any selection. That was either with the touchscreen, a rotary iDrive wheel, or the voice commands. The system worked well, but still for the most important controls, it still had some actual buttons. Personally, I still think this is quite important with lights, temperatures, and demisters, but will eventually voice commands take over? I think it probably will, but the only vehicle that I've ever driven that I'm confident in using voice commands is the Tesla. It's the only system that I can rely on things that I actually say and want to do to be understood and carried out. And it's this button here on the right hand side of the steering wheel. You literally press it in and then tell the car what you would like. Uh, for example, let's turn the temperatures up. Turn the temperature to 20 degrees. Done. No problems. Easy enough. Let's try something else. Turn on rear window heating. There you go, and it's enabled the rear defroster or rear demister. So it is pretty good. Even if you try to use voice commands and you have to have multiple attempts to get that action going, that's taking your attention away from the road. Hey, Volkswagen. Hey, Volkswagen. What would you like to do? Even in my Golf, when I press the voice command button, I find myself looking at the screen to find out when I can ask that question. And that's wrong. The system in my Golf is actually one of the worst systems I've used in a while, but it doesn't really affect me too much. For me, most of the things that people complain about with these infotainment screens, you shouldn't really be using on the move anyway. You should be selecting your destination on your sat-nav before your journey starts. You shouldn't be selecting a playlist from your streaming service on the move. And don't even get me started on sending messages. So what controls should you be able to operate easily? Personally, I don't think there's actually that many things that are essential to driving. Let's think about this for a little second. How many things on the trip computer do you actually need to complete your drive? Do you really need to adjust your suspension settings while you're on the move? And do you really need to slightly adjust the temperature settings before you reach that next set of red lights? Even if you're on a motorway or a faster moving road, never try and adjust any of the settings where risk is high or it's busy surrounding you. There are a few controls that you do need to operate quickly and easily when you're driving. So let's have a look at these controls and how quickly they can be accomplished in both my cars. So let's have a look and see how easy things are operated in the Tesla. Now we're going to work off lights first of all. Um, we press one button and then we've got all the lights here on the top. Um, they're currently set to automatic so that's not a problem but if I have to change them to dipped headlights again it's two presses there and there and we're done. Demisters work in a similar way. It's a different section of the screen. You press the temperature and then we've got the demisters front and back in this area. Wipers on the Tesla, you can operate just by pressing this button. If you wish to wash the windscreen, you press and hold. Not a big deal, that's okay. And the automatic generally do a reasonable job. But if you do need to change them and change the settings, say for example, if you're coming up to a fast lorry on a motorway with loads of spray kicking out, we've got to press the button and then we've got to change the wipers in this middle section. And even there, you may have heard my little pause in my voice. I was working out where it was. So it's not as instinctive as it should be. Wipers should be on a stalk, one side or the other. Hazard lights are also easy. Um, they're up here on this car. 
just get used to where they are in your vehicle and that is an actual button as well. Volume control is something that I think should be able to be operated quickly and easily. It's quite important, say, if you were coming up to a humpback bridge, you needed to turn your radio down just in case there was a beep that you need to listen out for. And luckily, in this Tesla, we've got one on the steering wheel. It's this button here. So let's start off with the demisters in the Golf. Now, um, they're on a panel here to this right-hand side. Um, we can see that there's uh, lights and demisters on this little little panel. There's grooves in the panel or little ridges that really give you an idea of where the buttons are, but it's still going to be a visual um, sort of like workout to see where and to, to find out how to press that button. So we can see the rear one. I press it. There's no haptic feedback. I don't know it's pressed, um, but there was a little click. You may have heard that. Hopefully you've heard that to say that it has been activated and the same when it's turned off. So while we're down dealing with this panel on the right side, we may as well look at the lights in this Golf. And it's the mode button um, in the top section of this panel that we've got to press to operate the lights. The issue with this, I think, it doesn't allow you to select any lights that you wish instantaneously. You've got to cycle through. So it's on mode at the moment, or it's on auto at the moment. So I press the mode button, it goes to dipped headlights. I get a notification on the uh, dashboard. But if I press it again, it goes to side lights or parking lights, and then I press it again, it goes to off, and then I press it again to go back to auto. I cannot just flip a switch and know it's on it. You've got to cycle through all the time, which I don't think is a brilliant design. Wipers in the Golf are as they should be, in my opinion, on a stalk on this right side. They're easy to work out. I don't have to look at all these uh, instructions on it. You can do it by trial and error. If I click it up and the wipers go on um, without being on all the time, I know that's on intermittent. So I know I've already worked out that up goes faster and down goes slower. So that's how they should be, unlike the Tesla buttons on the infotainment screen. The ability to operate some of these controls may even be asked of you on your driving test. So to be able to do this safely is paramount. Quite simply, when you need to do something, you should identify where that particular control is if you're not familiar with it, and then look at the traffic conditions surrounding you to find the best time to operate. If you're searching for this control on a large, complicated infotainment screen, or in fact, if it's an unresponsive one, and it takes multiple presses for you to find out whether it's worked, this is all again taking your attention away from the road. I'm still a big advocate of having actual buttons to control most of these important elements. You can see where it is, you can put your finger on that button, and you can actually feel whether it's being pressed. Some of the new systems, including that on my Golf, have buttons with haptic feedback. In other words, when you press them, you can feel whether they've been pressed. But for me, because there's no distinct edges, they're still confusing. I would like to add that the temperature and volume buttons on my Golf are a lot easier to operate than some of the press have made out. You put your finger on them, feel where the section is, because it's got a couple of ridges on either side, and you can literally slide your finger to the right or to the left to increase the temperature or the volume. But you've still got to look at the screen to see what it's set to. I would also like to add though, if you have a button and you can put your finger on it and you absolutely categorically know that each press of the button or move one way or the other increases or decreases the temperature by half a degree, you can work it out quite quickly. You don't even have to look back to see whether it is set that two degrees higher. You know you've just budged it up four times. Over the last few years, manufacturers seem to have improved the height of these touchscreens, meaning they are closer to the driver's line of sight. The physical act of interacting with these touchscreens is still awkward for me though. It feels as though my hand goes everywhere, and I don't know whether that's the movement of the car. I always feel as though I could do with a little bit of hand support. The Tesla screen is extremely large, meaning the touch sensitive areas can be spread apart. But resolution and responsiveness is excellent though. When I first took delivery of the Tesla, I didn't operate many, if any, of the controls on the way home. It's really important to familiarise yourself with these systems before you go delving and taking your attention away from the road. Now I've lived with the car for a couple of months though, the systems are really easy and there's only two or three presses of a button to get to wherever you want to go. 
And like I've already alluded to, the voice control systems are amazing on the Tesla. And it's the only vehicle I've ever had or driven in where you can operate the rear demister by voice command. You can even turn on the heated seats. My bum's cold. Another point that I'd like to go back to is the fact that I've been in many vehicles over the years with way too many buttons, and they can be just as confusing as the touchscreens. Please let me know in the comments which controls you think should be operated by buttons and buttons only, with no exception. I've already stated in this video that most of the controls that can be operated by a touchscreen you don't actually need, but that doesn't stop the fact that most are going to be compelled to touch something and change something, just like they do on the mobile phone. Voice commands, I'm sure, are going to play a big part in our future car operation. The implementation of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto into our vehicles, I think, has been a good thing, but I still think it encourages people to use these touchscreens and operate things that they shouldn't do unnecessarily. And this, again, all takes attention away from the road. In summary, I think it adds to the complexity of driving a vehicle. And with more and more vehicles on the road, this surely increases risk. Please let me know in the comments what your infotainment screen and system is like in the car that you drive and operate. And have you also been guilty, just like I have, of operating things and changing things when you shouldn't really? Keep safe and hope to see you soon.